All right then, hello again. This is the last video about Thailand. Yippee! You wouldn't believe how much editing I've been doing the last few weeks. It has been driving me absolutely crazy. So this is Goodbye Thailand. Again, I'm remaking it at home because there's other things I want to say. I made it in my hotel room. This should be really my last round of golf at Red Mountain. But that all went wrong. I suffered from a little bit of TIT, toughest Thailand. And that does happen. But before I get onto that last round of golf and where it all went wrong, I want to touch on two subjects. The first one is the weather. Now Thailand is tropical, so you get, you get these, it's called a monsoon, isn't it? That's the word I'm searching for. I'm having a bad day today, I tell you. I'm supposed to be playing golf now, and it has been lamping it down all morning. Anyway, so you get the monsoon. Now, the dry season is November to March. Those are the driest months. You still get the rain, you still get the odd thunderstorm, but that's generally the best time of year to go. But I was there um, from about the middle of March to the beginning of April, running into the rainy season, and we got a hell of a lot. And when I normally go around about the middle of November, then you don't tend to get that issue. You, you will get a couple of thunderstorms, but you're not going to have this constant waking up in the morning to heavy rain or heavy rain around about 11 or 1 in the afternoon as I was getting while I was there. So if you're coming out with me or if you're planning your own trip, you know, just be aware of what's the dry season, what's the rainy season and plan accordingly. The other reason I go in the middle of November is quite often at the end of, end of October where they've had one of their wettest months, they'll holotine and sand the greens. Now on a 27 hole layout, that's fine because they'll take nine holes out and they'll do that nine holes and then when it's good, they'll put that back in and they'll do the next nine and then they'll do the next nine. So there's always 18 holes available. But on an 18 hole golf course, sometimes you get sanded greens if you're early November. Now, the second thing is how to get better at golf. What did stopping trying to knock the cover off the ball do for me? Well, nothing instantly. Golf does not give you instant gratification. You know, it takes time to work it in. But essentially, over two summers, I dropped my handicap to five. And I think that was about the maximum I could get to for a little guy who suffers with back problems. You know, every now and then you're going to have an issue. Like, for instance, 2018, 2019, I had crippling sciatica for months and my handicap just... It crept back up to 7. In fact, it went to 7.5. So I went to an 8 handicap uh, somewhere around about the beginning of 2019. And I've been working my way down again. Except for that lurgy, which kind of like put us all uh, at home for a few months. But yeah, I got down to 5 handicap. And... I was flip-flopping around five and six, five, six, five, six. Good month, bad month, you know, that sort of thing, as I'm doing right now. I got down to six, now I'm down to five. I have no doubt at some point I'll have a, I'll have a bad few weeks and it'll crawl to six. And then I'll have a good few weeks and it'll crawl back to five. So it finally got my handicap down to where I thought my best was. The most important thing it did for me is it allowed my handicap to travel. All of a sudden, it wasn't just a question of I could go around my own course well, it was I could go around other courses well. The 2011 trip to Thailand, I had nine rounds of golf, I shot level par twice on longer courses than I've been playing in Phuket, and all the other courses that I played which are longer than the courses I played in Phuket, and I shot a grand total over those nine rounds. 
I've been doing some adding up. About seven or eight under my handicap. So I was averaging one under my handicap every time I went out. So sometimes I was over, but sometimes I was under. And twice, as I say, I shot level par. So that's what I find, is that my handicap travels so much better now. And if all the stars align and everything is working, then I really do go low. Right, so goodbye Thailand. My final last round of golf was planned for Red Mountain. Turned up at 10 past 8 in the morning for a 9am tea time. I was told in the pro shop that three guys were joining me and I thought, great, I'm going to have some company on the golf course, we're going to have four caddies, we'll forget about the golf so much, we'll, we'll talk about the golf course and we'll have the caddies playing on camera for us. Get down to the starter, after I've got my locker, the starter says, oh, those three guys, they don't want to play with you. I say, okay, fair enough. They can get their own tea time. No, 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 they, they get your tea time. You're the one who's going to have to get a new tea time. I said, hang on a minute, Golf Asian booked this for me six weeks ago. This is my tea time. Now, there's no point in losing your rag in Thailand. The, the culture... The Buddhist culture, if you like, all over Southeast Asia is if you lose your temper, you're considered to be an idiot because you've allowed something to affect you that badly that you lose your temper. So there's no point losing your temper. And anyway, there's the obvious language barrier and you're never going to win. So there's no point fighting because you're never going to win. So TIT, toughest Thailand. They get my tea time. I said, OK, I want to play this course the correct way round. When's the next tee time on, on the first tee? Half eleven. Yeah, that's a long, long way away. So I went to the tenth, got the camera out, started playing, you know, the kind of average, sort of reasonable golf without anything exciting round the back nine. <coughs> Excuse me, that par five where I kept leaking the ball into the sand. I actually took a three wood. I got it out to the left. I then hit a, a mid iron up the fairway. I wedged it on and I got a nice regular par five, which I was really pleased to do, do for the camera sort of thing. Um, somewhere later on, I hooked into the jungle but it hit a tree and it came out. But I was blocked and I, I kind of like hockeyed my way up the hole. Um, and at 16 it started raining. Now it wasn't raining a lot, but it was, it was raining. 17, that really steep par three down the hill there, I parred that. At 18, it, it was really raining by then. And um, took the driver, had a little slip in the fingers somewhere in the swing and I hooked that into the jungle. So I took another ball and I hooked that into the jungle as well. So somewhere or other I, I've hit two hooks and I've, I've lost two balls on 18. Worst hole of the, of the tour without a doubt. I just jumped in the car and we drove down the hill and the caddy said drop zone. See, some courses have drop zones for water and some courses have drop zones for jungle. And I was sort of like, why didn't you tell me there was a drop zone before I put a second ball in the jungle? T.I.T. <laughs> toughest Thailand. Anyway, I finished the hole. We went to the drink stop by the 10th tee because that was the only one that was open at Red Mountain. Um, got some drinks, had a little break. Went to the first tee. First tee is still crowded because it's nowhere near half past 11. What are we going to do? So it was back to the drink stop. Pissed away about another 45 minutes. Went back to the first tee. And it's properly raining now. The camera's been put away. I think I put it away on the 18th, actually. I put it away on the 18th before I teed off on 18. So all I got filmed was 10 to 17. 
So we get to the first tee again and eventually we can get out. But now it is, it is lamping it down and there's thunder in the air. We played one and two. The thunder was right overhead. So we drove to the closed drink stop by the fourth tee. We skipped the little par three third and then we were stuck in there for about 40 minutes until it passed over. And once it had passed over, you know, I was soaked through. The gear was soaked through. Um, so I just said, right, back, back to the clubhouse. I was offered a nine hole rain check. I said, I don't know how I'm going to use this. I said, I'm going home. So, uh, TIT, tough, it's Thailand. So that was my last round of golf, sadly. Um, that's the problem with the time of year I was going. And it was always a problem being a single golfer in Thailand. Unless you're prepared to go out early or... And when I say early, I mean teeing off at 7 o'clock. You know, getting out of bed before the crack of dawn and getting to the golf course at the crack of dawn. And it's been a little while since I was up at the crack of dawn. So that was my last round. Um, I don't think there's anything more to say other than I'm going back. I can't imagine me going anywhere else. I enjoy it so much and I enjoy the people so much and the culture and the food and everything to do with being in Southeast Asia. I wish I had more money because over the years I, I wouldn't have been keep going back to Thailand. I would have been to Malaysia, I would have been to Singapore, Cambodia, Vietnam, Indonesia, the Philippines, China, Japan. I just don't have the money. Thailand is affordable and it's a reasonable distance for me to fly. 12 hours isn't so bad. So that's why I keep going back. And it's, it's it, I think it's something to do with getting old. You know, there's something pleasurable about going into the hotel and you've got the same people on reception, you've got the same security guard, you've got the same room cleaners, because you don't always get the same cleaner every time. You've got the same people on the hotel bar, you've got the same people uh, in the restaurant for breakfast. There's something very reassuring about that. And I think that's an age thing. But for the moment, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're new and you're wondering what on earth I'm doing, I occasionally have a little chat to camera, have a talk to you guys, let you know what I'm doing or what I'm going to be doing. At the moment, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot. Now that... Um, Fuel has gone through two pounds a litre. You know, we're heading for ten pound a gallon, without a doubt. Just read on the news that fuel might be expensive enough that it will be a hundred pounds to fill your tank. Well, in eight, at the beginning of April, it, it cost a hundred and seven pounds to fill my tank, so goodness knows what it is now. I just sling, sling 40 or 50 pounds in it, but my away days could be compromised simply for the cost of fuel. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't seen all the Thailand videos, go and have a look at the Thailand videos. Go have a look at the golf courses and the countryside and, and enjoy those. I know I do bang on about my score a bit too much. I should be doing how to get better at golf and I'm going to try and do that in future is talk about how to get round a golf course not my own personal score around the golf course it's a bit difficult when you've when you've got a camera and no cameraman and you're on your own and you're not even sure whether you're in focus or in shot or it's a bit awkward but goodbye Thailand and thank you for everything you've given me. Till the next time. Which isn't that long away, actually. It's um, 
It's about 16 and a half, 17 months. Start saving your money if you're coming. All right, guys, just got to Lilybrook. So just hang on a minute while I give you four quotes to end this Thailand holiday. First one isn't even original, but it basically says, don't regret the things you've done, regret the things you left undone. Yeah, nothing original in that. Second quote is from my dad and it really ties in to that first one. It was about three days before he died and all through his retirement we've been urging mum and dad to do the things that they wanted to do and they never did get round to doing it. So his last words to me were, you're right Simon, if there's something you want to do with your life, you should go and do it. Now isn't that words of regret of the things that he didn't get round to doing that he should have done? Doesn't that tie in with the first one? Now the third one is from Minnie. The last round of golf, we got through to the 15th tee, the little par three down the hill over the water. And uh, there's a bench behind the tee underneath two trees. And I said, look, I need five minutes to cool down. And we went and sat on the bench with a cold drink and we were talking about all sorts of nonsense. I, I couldn't even tell you what we were talking about now. It's, it's gone. But she said to me, you should get as much enjoyment out of your life as you can. Yeah. When you think about these things, you know, what's holding you back? Money, probably, these days. Yeah. Money. But I'll leave you with a quote of my own if you get to Southeast Asia any time to play golf or just a family holiday or, or anything. But I'll leave you with this very, very important piece of advice. Never, never, never trust a fart in Thailand. Cheers.